Now before you can start working with polygon primitives, you have to understand what makes up a polygon primitive. A polygon primitive is comprised of three basic components. One is called a vertice, which is just a point in space. It's a spot where if you were to like reach your hand up with a pen and you were able to draw a dot in the air of nothing, that would be just this point in space. It's connected, one point in space is connected to another point in space through an edge. So as you can see here, this little bitty dot right here, that is a point in space, also referred to as a vertice as the technical term. Now if I were to select this vertice and I were to move this vertice up, notice that there's another vertice here, that's another point in space. Now I have two points in space and over here in the component editor, which don't worry about how to open this up right now. I just have this open just to show you. This first point in space is at 0, 0, 0, X, Y, Z. Now what does that mean? That means that if you look down here on the Z axis, the X axis, and the Y axis, that's just a means of identifying a location in the 3D space. It's saying that at X, Y, Z, there is a point. Now if I were to show my grid, if I were to come up here, show, and select grid, you can notice that that's dead center of the 3D space. So coming back in, I'm going to turn off my grid again. The second point that I moved up, the other point in space, just this area in space where I've placed a point, you'll notice that's at vertex Y16. So if you come down here and you look at Y, this is 16 Maya units up in the air. So now the 3D application, this 3D package Maya understands that there is a point in dead center of the environment and there's also a point 16 units up and in between those points it connects them with this line here this line is an edge it's a means of connecting two points in space now let's say I were to create another point in space I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna create one more point in space I'm gonna go ahead and press 4 to turn my wireframe on so you can see now that I have three points in space I have one point here that if you come over it's Z 16 see right here Z I just moved it over on the Z axis 16 units this is Y 16 but the X and the Z are zero so this is just up 16 units Y remember Y so it's moved up in space so it's higher from the ground than the other two points this one is further to the left of the original point so now I have three points in space uh, I didn't get confusing there for a second, but each of these three points in space are connected by these lines, which are referred to in a 3D environment as edges. So I have vertices, which are the points in space, just the area that is identified to the package as X, Y, Z, and then the location X, Y, Z. This one would be X, zero, Y, zero, Z, 16. It just means that on the Z axis, it's 16 over. This is X, Y, Z, zero. It's dead center of the map. And this is zero X, Y is 16, which means it's up 16 units from the ground and Z zero. Now in a 3D package, if you have three points that are connected in the center of them, there can be a face. And that's where you're going to get all your detail. Like your face is going to have the texture on it. It's going to have the UV map. It's going to have the bump map. Any kind of cool effects are going to be painted onto that face. So if I were to press 5 on my keyboard to bring up my shaded display, now you can see that there is this face in between these three points. And that's really an all an object is. So I'm going to go ahead and right click, go to object mode. I'm going to select this. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. I'm going to close my component editor. Now let's come up here. I'm going to show my grid and I'm going to zoom out a little bit. First thing, let's go ahead and create a box and you can, when we create the box, you can kind of get a better idea of what these points are doing to make that box work and make that box look like a box. So come up here and the first thing we should do is go ahead and select this snap to grids. Yours will look like that. Just go ahead and left click on it and come over here to the box, hover over it, just left click it once and come down here on the grid and here's our plus is dead center. Let's come off dead center by one and we're gonna drag it all the way out so we kind of get a four by four square so just left click hold it down drag it out to where we have kind of four squares are covered and then release and then left click it again and you'll notice it also snaps vertically 
like I did horizontally. So we're going to go ahead and snap it six times. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So now I can see that this is standing six feet tall. If you remember in the Unreal Engine, six, 16 units, one of these little boxes is one foot squared. So you can see that this is standing six feet tall. So this is roughly the size of a character in the Unreal Engine. Now the first thing you probably noticed on my screen, first off, my object is shaded. Yours might look like might look like this. Well, if it looks like this, again, if you remember in the previous video, you can just press five on your keyboard, or you can come up here to sh or to shading and select smooth shade all, and just select that, and it should look mine like mine. The second thing you might notice is I have this weird looking gizmo over my object. If you don't have that gizmo, you can press W on your keyboard, which is the move tool, or you can hover over this button here and just select it, which is also the move option. Again, I recommend if you can't remember what a hotkey is, hover over the button, look in the parentheses of the pop-up, and that'll tell you what the hotkey is for that button. And then come back into the window, and instead of selecting that button, press the key on your keyboard because you don't always want to have to be coming out here out of the rind or the viewport window and messing with these buttons while you're working it just will slow you down big time so if you have this gizmo popped up what you got to do is understand what this gizmo does this gizmo helps you move objects right now we're in object mode so we can move this entire object this entire box and this this is the same move tool that you would see if you were working with just the points or the edges or the faces and you had one of those selected you'd see the same gizmo for moving it around when you have the move tool selected so in order to work this gizmo it's very simple to use i mean very simple remember we still have snap to grids turned on go ahead and leave that turned on for right now and hover over this blue one now if you look down here in my lower left hand portion of my screen remember that z that x is red and that y is yellow on this little gidget here on my hud the same thing applies with this gizmo the z is blue the x is red and the y is yellow y will move your cube up and down right z the blue one a z will move it to the left and to the right depending on how you're looking at it. I guess it would be forward and backwards if you're looking at it from the front, or if you look at it from the side, it would be left and right. That just means it moves it on the Z axis, right? By just clicking it, holding down with your left mouse button and moving it. And X will move it forward and backward from our current view. It just will move it on the X axis forward and backwards by clicking it. Now, new to Maya 2015 are these little boxes next to the gizmo, and that box applies to the ones that it's in between. If you kind of look around, it's kind of in between two of the points. Uh, for instance, this one right here is in between the Y and the Z. That means it will allow me to move it not only side to side, but I can also move it up at the same time. So if I were to click that, I can, well, I have snap to grids turned on, which will kind of mess it up, but I can kind of move it like this. That's moving on the Z and the X. Now I can't bring it forward towards me on the X because it's constrained to those two axes, constrained to the Y and it's constrained to the Z, which is up and side to side. Now the bottom one, of course, is constrained to the Z and the X axis. And so I could, well, snap to grid is still turned on, so it's gonna be all weird, but it's constrained to those. Go ahead and come up here and deselect snap to grids so it doesn't mess with us on this you'll notice that i can move it on this but the one thing i can't do is i cannot move it up it'll always be stuck on the ground so it's useful to know that that's what these little boxes do i love that they added these these are going to be very useful but it it constrains it to the two axes that it's in between well, that's your little move gizmo and of course there's the square in the center which i don't recommend using very much and you can kind of see that that's a free move it'll move up it'll move forward it'll move side to side but it's not very useful because it's in a 3d space you can get very confused very quickly on which way you're moving it and again as you see me rotating my camera at any time that's just just me holding down my alt button and my left mouse button to rotate my camera that we discussed in the previous video now let's go ahead and talk about we talked about what made up 
an object in 3D space, you can see that there is a corner to this box. That means, and there's these lines going to that corner. That means that there is a point here, and then this is an edge connecting to another point here. And in between these edges and these points is a face because you have more than three. Three or more points in space allows you to have a face in between them. So let's go ahead and real quick just take a look at this in wireframe mode. Let's go ahead and press four on your keyboard. And we're going to hover over the line because we're in wireframe. We should have done this before we went in wireframe, but hover over the line to where you're hovered just dead over one of the lines. Right click and you'll notice this sub menu pops up. Now this is the menu for this box. Each and every object that you were to add in your scene would have its own menu. And you just hover over it, right click on it, and this little sub menu, hold down your right mouse button. Now to work this, you're gonna notice I'm gonna kind of go like this, and I got this little line that's coming out, and it's highlighting these options around it. Now the only one that we're gonna talk about right now is gonna be the vertex one. So I want you to hover over vertex, and then release your right mouse button. Now I'm gonna use Alt on my keyboard and my middle mouse button. I'm gonna click off here, nothing. Alt, middle mouse button, move it up. So I'm gonna be able to pan it up and then I'm gonna hold down Alt and my right mouse button and I'm gonna move my mouse down while holding those down. And then I'm gonna hold down Alt, my middle mouse button, move it up. And that's just gonna kind of get me centered in on that point in space. Now you can see I have a vertice selected. That's why this uh, it's yellow right now, it's selected. My move gizmo is dead on top of it. If I were to just click over here and nothing, it would deselect it. Now, just like we did in the previous video with selecting multiple objects in a scene, it's the same concept with selecting points on a points on an object. So I can hold down shift, click on that one point, then I can hover over the next point hold down shift and click on it. Now I have two selected. And my move gizmo will allow me to move them. Again, move is W. If your gizmo disappeared, you press W. There's your move gizmo. And I can move these. So notice I can move them on the Z axis. I can move them on the X axis. And I can move them on the Y axis, which is up and down. And this is how you're gonna manipulate these 3D objects, is you're going to right click over the object, select what part of the object, if you wanna move edges around, if you wanna move vertices around, which are the points in space, or if you wanna move faces by selecting the whole face, you would select those, then click on the face, the edge, or the vertice, and manipulate it by moving it, scaling it, rotating it, whatever, we'll get into that in more depth here pretty soon. So go ahead and press five on your keyboard. Notice you don't have to be in wireframe mode. I just wanted you to see wireframe mode so you can see that there's the points and there's the edge in between the points and this invisible area is the face. So I press five, I can see that face. Well, now that you have a basic understanding of how to work with a polygon primitive and what makes a polygon primitive, we're gonna talk about how we can save our scene before we actually start building something with polygon primitives, we need to understand how Maya's file system works with projects. So we're gonna set up our project in the next video, talk a little bit about how the file system works in a project, and then we're gonna start making something cool. I'm not quite decided what we're gonna make. I'm thinking something like a weapon, like a sword or something for our first object ever. 